one of the key problems, particularly in, uh, again, decentralized finance and crypto, has been um, if you say you are launching a stable coin that is matching one-to-one -one, uh, with a, uh, dollars that are stored elsewhere in a bank account somewhere, is that money actually there? That's the first part. Are you verifiably bringing that data on chain and ensuring that um, the public or your users uh, can actually be confident that, that in fact that money is actually there? And you know, there's various uh, you know, challenges that have appeared in the in the sector over the last few years in, in this realm as well. That's part one, is so can you actually verifiably prove that you know, the funds are locked away in a bank account somewhere? Part two, and where it gets really interesting, is it, can you actually incorporate rules into the minting of a particular stable coin? So um, using proof of reserve to, to Eddie's point, what, we'd, what we enable our users to do, both again in the decentralized finance space as well as in the traditional finance space, uh, is if you incorporate proof of reserve to bring that data on chain um, and make sure that you know, users can be, um, what you say you hold is verifiable. Uh, but importantly, incorporate into the minting contract, your users now actually have assurance that you as an entity cannot over mint. So if you say you have $100 million in a bank account, you should have $100 million worth of tokens. You can't mint $101 million of tokens. And I think that's really the power of it. Verifiable data, bringing that transparently on chain, and then putting controls around how that can be used. 